Hey everyone, welcome to another live stream. I'm Josh Wells. Uh, I'm here in Vancouver, Washington, home of ScreenPrinted.com. Uh, today I'm going to be printing some hoodies, um, printing on sweatshirts, and I'm just going to be covering some of the basics and just really some of the ground level kind of foundation of how you do that. Meaning, hey, how am I going to set up? Uh, what adhesives do I use? How often? Heat? All these variables, right? Um, I'll cover the basics and answer some questions as we go. Put them in the chat, and I'll do my best to read them. So, uh, I s here we go. Okay, so when I'm walking up to a press and I know that I'm going to be doing fleece, um, the first thing I'm going to think about is actually my setup, right? And and really what I mean by that is I need to set up with a certain amount of off-contact. Sweatshirts are thicker than t-shirts and so naturally we need just actually a little bit more off contact. I already set up our design. It's a four color and you'll see right here with my off contact cam that I have a decent amount of off contact, probably double what you normally would do with a t-shirt. Uh, my other variable with uh, sweatshirts and fleece is just basically a couple things. One is that sweatshirts, nine times out of ten, are a poly cotton blend, right? And the way that most of them are made, they have the fleece on the inside. This is actually the poly part of that garment. It's been woven to the inside. And the reason that's a big deal is because poly is heat sensitive. It heats up quite a bit quicker than cotton, right? And because of that, this is kind of an unstable um, substrate, right? So we get it hot. Let's say in this case, we're going to do a base and then three colors on top. As I heat it up under the flash, that garment's going to move and shift and shimmy in like all the bad ways, right? So I'm going to have to use kind of a burlier adhesive. Some of you guys might know it. web adhesive, okay? And I'll, I'll show this off in a bit. But this comes out essentially just like it sounds, web adhesive, it's like Spider-Man web. It's actually kind of fun to use, but it creates a big mess. Um, the other variable, because of this, like I already mentioned, since the poly fiber is to the inside of the garment and it's not really heat stable, I'm gonna need to be thinking about my heat. Okay, so, and I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more as I load the garment and I, I start to print it. Um, another variable of sweatshirts, crew, neck, shirts, not as much, but with hoodies, we need to think about placement because we have this hood on the back of it, right? And so we want to make sure that we can still see the image um, when the hood is down. And so I'm going to show you kind of how to make that aesthetically pleasing without making it too low because um, it looks a little goofy when it gets down in the middle of the back. So we're going to work on that. Um, first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to run through a test print. Just make sure I'm still in registration. You'll get to see the design. Uh, we'll look at how to set up your flash for a hoodie. Talk, a couple, talk through a couple variables there. So uh, let me grab a test print. Uh, and I also need to grab one more thing little screen print trick. I'm, I'm sure you, some of you guys may know this. So when I'm printing hoodies and I'm using web spray, web spray is super messy, just quite honestly. So I have always taken a piece of cardboard and thrown it on the floor underneath where I'm going to be spraying web. Because you'll notice as this comes out, it, it makes a mess. And one more thing there, because it makes a mess, I also will keep a rag on hand as I'm printing to get all these danglers that are on the side of the pallet. Because with a hoodie, as most of you know, hoodie has this hem, right? And it's a little bunched up. If I load it and it's bunched up, it's going to get all these danglers on the side of the pallet, right? And Web spray, quite honestly, is really difficult to get off of this after that happens. It's virtually impossible. So make sure you have a rag, keep it in your pocket or whatever, and just wipe it off after every spray. That becomes a little more difficult when you're in auto because it's going quicker. 
but you can achieve it. Uh, all right, guys. Let's grab a test print shirt. It's rad if you have old hoodies that are maybe rejects or something, but you know, not everybody has reject hoodies. It's okay to do a test print on a t-shirt just to make sure you're still in registration. Just know your sweatshirt is going to be thicker, right? And so it might change just a little, it might uh, resolve or kind of change the registration a little bit. But today we'll just do this on a t-shirt just to get placement. I want to know where my image lands. I want to make sure it's still in registration before I print a good one. I'm going to do a white base first. Um, I'm going to pull this squeegee. Normally I actually push most of my prints. Um, just old, so I like to push my squeegee. But sweatshirts are one of those times actually I will pull the squeegee. It just gives me more opportunity to do different angles. Um, so I'm going to do kind of a nice upright angle. I'm using a 70-90-70 if that matters to you. I'm doing this white, this is F and ink white on a 156. We're going to give it a couple of nice just slow passes to create the foundation. Uh, a base print is exactly that. It's a foundation for the rest of the print. If it looks hairy, janky looking, guess what? When you flash it, you put other stuff on it, it's going to look the same. So we're going to flash that base. And bring it back over. On my hoodie, I'm actually going to go white flash white. But for my test print, I'm just going to run through it, make sure it's still in reg. Nice couple slow passes on this orange. This is F and ink orange. I believe this is a 200. That looks pretty good, still in reg. And then my next color is going to be F and ink red. Uh, this is ruby red, I believe. I chose it because it's kind of blood looking a little darker, right? My design's creepy, so it felt natural. Okay, we're gonna bring this down. You don't have to flood these. I am just preferring to flood right now. So we'll experiment maybe with both ways later. A couple nice passes. Still in reg there, I like that. We'll give it a quick flash, hit that black, and then um, we'll get our placement for our hoodie. All right, it's feeling good. Normally, if I was doing production, this shirt would go all the way around after the flash and would be cool by the time we get to it. But since it's right out of the flash, I want to make sure it cools down before I hit it with my next screen. Wow, that was loud. All right, there we go, there's that. It's looking good, I like it. So what I'm gonna do now is just grab a placement on it. Let it flash while I'm grabbing a measuring device from over here off camera where you can't see me. Here I am. Okay, cool. So with a t-shirt, let's say with a design like this, you would want it in that kind of back, what I call a billboard space. Um, and you could probably do three, three and a half inches from the seam, right? And it would look really appropriate. Um, with the hoodie, we have this hood hanging off the back, right? And it would cover most of this image if I placed it like a t-shirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of the image. It's three inches to the edge of my palette. I'm probably going to add just about two inches, okay? And what's that, what that's going to do for me is as that hood lays down, it's only going to cover just the very top of this. I could bring it down to where it like hung all the way below the hoodie but it might look kind of goofy, right? Um, so let's try about five inches. You could move your palette out. I, I prefer just to use real caveman basic couple fingers to take that seam off the palette. And, um, you know, I'll just use my fingers to make sure I'm landing in that same spot throughout production, right? 
You do what's comfortable for you. Okay, so this is good. We'll take this off. We'll send it down the conveyor. We're gonna hit this with some web spray again. Make sure we don't have any danglers. It's a new industry term if you didn't know. And we'll grab our hoodie. We're gonna get a big handful of hoodie. We're gonna find the center. Load it all the way on. I'm gonna grab my shoulder seams, which are the handles of my shirt. I'm gonna bring that seam a couple inches off. And you can kind of envision how this is gonna lay. The hood's not gonna lay just super flat, right? It's on a body. So it's gonna hang like that. We'll see most of this image, okay? So let's, we got our hoodie loaded. Let's come over here. We're gonna go to our base first. We'll give it a good flood. We're actually gonna put it where it needs to go. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna give it just a couple solid passes. Don't forget, sweatshirts are thicker. It's gonna take up all that big off contact we built. Now, this is where I need to start thinking about heat. Because the polyfiber in this garment heats up so quickly, and because that inside of the garment is so unstable, this base, if I flash it too long, is gonna not register to anything else in this design. Some flashes, let me know if you guys can't see this. Some flashes have temp control. So that comes in handy right now, right? I could just turn down my temp. Um, today, I could do that. I could also raise my flash. Okay. I'm raising that up makes the heat just less, a little less intense. And you can see how quickly that flashed. Um, time as far as flashing goes is going to be different for every flash, different environments, different hoodies. Um, but no matter what, if the hoodie has a polyfiber, this is gonna definitely flash quickly. This was probably only under there for five to six seconds, so. Okay, so we have our first white down. I probably, this design kind of lends itself to maybe only doing one white, but just to make it nice and bright, I'm gonna go ahead and do two. And since I'm building on top of my foundation, I probably don't need to do a bunch of strokes of white on there. I'll just do one, bring it back over. We're gonna flash. Don't forget, it's gonna go quick. Probably only need a couple seconds. You know, just touch it. Remember, if you're flashing, it's still gonna be a bit tacky. It's gonna be gelled, quote unquote, but I'm not gonna have ink coming off on my fingers, right? If you got ink on your fingers, you need to give it another second. All right, let's go to our orange. Okay, a couple nice passes, nice and slow. It's looking pretty good. We'll bring it over. Just give it a couple seconds. And remember, if I was in production and I was flashing right here, it would have, you know, three or four more heads to cool down as I printed. Uh, that's feeling a little sticky. It might just be because of heat, but I'm gonna give it just a couple more seconds. Cool, 
there's that. While that's cooling down, let's let it cool down for a moment. Let's see if there's any questions. What hoodie am I printing on? Yeah, great question. This is a Port & Co. Core fleece. Sanmar hooked us up with these for this live feed Q&A. So they have lots of great stuff. Check them out. Okay. That's feeling pretty good and cooled off. Let's put our red down. Again, I probably don't need to flood, but let's flood that stencil. We'll get a couple nice slow passes on it. Okay, nice. Let's give it one more. I see where the bottom of my red kind of blood drop here was just a hair out, which makes me think maybe I got a little hot. All right, we'll let that cool down for a second, bring the black over. If I was going on a black hoodie, maybe the design wouldn't need a black, but we're going on this dark charcoal, so we're gonna let the black come in and kind of outline the design a little bit. And this F and ink black is on 156. I actually burnt this on a 200, but then ripped the screen, so guess what? It's on a 156. Not gonna flood this. This sink's pretty creamy, pretty easy to pass through the screen. I, I don't wanna get too much through the screen. So that's looking pretty good. I think uh, where my red was out a little bit, it tightened it up. Um, taking a hoodie off the palette, it's just like taking a shirt off. However, the web spray is a little more aggressive. So what I like to do is I like to grab this hem, pop it up and off, grab these handles, right? There's our print. Actually, what I might do real quick is just flash this so I can show you where the hood lands. All right, we'll do that just flash for a second and then I'll send it down the conveyor. I do see a question, how do you make sure off contact is the same on all print heads? It's a good question and I will tell you in just a moment. Okay, great. So you can kind of imagine if that hood would land in the top portion of that image, but the bulk of the image would actually show, right? Now, if you're concerned about it, throw it on somebody's body. Like actually get it on a person's body and see it, and that'll help you gauge. I recommend that with left chest or the back of hoodies. Really getting it on a person is kind of the way to tell, really. Um, and then from there, you know, you start to get a feel for, hey, this is where this is gonna go. Um, and some customers, or maybe your design, might wanna live lower so you can see the whole image. I just prefer to keep my prints off the space, kind of the, the tramp stamp area, right? So I like something like that. Hopefully you guys do too. Uh, let's address this question. How do you make sure off contact is the same on all print heads? That is a fantastic question. So before I ever printed a good shirt, I would make sure that my off contact was the same on all four of these print heads, right? Or all four of these colors rather. And the reason being is if I have good off contact on my white, and then my other colors are whack, or I'm sorry, my other colors don't have good off contact. Um, what you're gonna find is that mechanically these screens don't interact the same, right? They're gonna flex differently as they come down to the garment. And so it's gonna be hard to uh, hold your registration. So one way is simply just to kneel down, make sure side to side, I mean, you can visually do this, right? So if you're used to that and you like that, that's how I do it. Um, I also see a method, something like this, where I might take, let's say a few cards, right? A few cleanup cards. 
and I might make it four cards deep at all four corners uh, for like let's say a t-shirt. In this instance I might make it six cards deep on all four corners and then I would use this as my mechanism to basically create that off contact. Some of you guys have done that style of creating off contact where you lay something on the palette loosen up whatever mechanism your press uses, let the print, um, the, the screen arm fall down into the uh, forks, and then the screen is held up, then you tighten it back up. That's kind of what I'm referring to here. Hopefully that makes sense. But that is how you do it. And then you would take this one pallet and take every one of your screens to that one pallet and just make sure they all look the same. Hopefully that helps. Would you print wet on wet to help cut flash times down? You could, you could. Um, for instance, with a design like this, let's say I went white flash, you know, even just cutting out one flash would be helpful, right? So if I went white flash, black, orange flash, red, I would cut out one of my flashes. Um, whenever you're doing wet on wet printing, just always remember a little higher mesh counts, right? And so, for instance, I would not do my black on a 156 if I was doing that. I'd do, go more like a 230. Because the more ink on the garment means the more ink is going to be picked up on the next screen. So, yeah, you can cut out a flash if you can make the design function like that. So. Can I use water-based adhesive? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, I'm going to say 90 plus percent of screen printers printing hoodies and sweats are going to do web. Um, I do know a couple of very patient screen printers that will use water-based adhesive. I'm pro water-based adhesive 100% until I hit hoodies. Um, so. I will kind of explain why. When you print a hoodie, you can see already that this palette is filthy. That fleece portion of the hoodie is getting stuck to the web adhesive, right? Well, the same thing's gonna happen if you do water-based adhesive. If you apply water-based adhesive, load the hoodie, all that fleece is gonna stick to it. So it's not like when we use water-based adhesive with a t-shirt, right? Um, it leaves a pretty thick layer of fleece behind. Yes, you can do it know that you'll have to apply it more. Web is the same. You're actually going to apply it almost every sweatshirt, if not every sweatshirt that you print. Especially if I have um, a lot of flashes happening in the design, I'm going to do a lot of web spray, basically. What other questions do we have? Oh, how often do you need to reapply adhesive? Yep, just answered it. So basically, every time I print a hoodie, take it off, I'm going to reapply. So every time I'm reapplying. Uh, you know, if it's a one color or maybe um, something that I'm printing that doesn't have a base, I might not need to be so concerned. But if there's any butt to butt or base with a color on top happening, I'm going to spray every time. So I like this question. Should you do more print passes to flatten the fibers of the hoodie or use a smoothing screen if you have the space? Great question. Uh, either or. I'm super pro smoothing screen. If any of you guys don't know what that is, it's essentially a screen, no image on it, right? So an emulsified screen, no image, Teflon sheet on the bottom, right? And let's say I printed my base here. I would bring this blank screen with the Teflon on it in and smooth that print after I flashed it, right? So it's still hot. I smooth it out. Imagine kind of a heat press on press, right? And it basically smooths out your print. They also make smoothing screens. I think Action makes one. Uh, there's roller squeegees that will smooth the print after a flash. All those are totally valid. You can do it with a hoodie. Um, or you can just do a couple passes, nice slow passes to make sure your foundation is nice and level, right? I hope that helps. All right, let's do um, the front of this design right now. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to take a drink. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. 
We're gonna grab this web spray. Remember, pretty much every time you load a sweatshirt, you're applying new adhesive. Grab that rag, get any danglers. Okay. Now a consideration on the front of a hoodie, again, not so much with a crew, but you have a pocket, right? Uh, to keep your hands warm, which is always nice, right? Um, but you have this pocket here. So if the image is larger, you need to watch out for placements and stuff like that. In this case, my front's not that large. Uh, before we print this, let's get a placement actually. going to grab a test print. Bring this over, same thing. F and ink white. Going through a 157. And I'll probably just print the base so I can grab the placement. Throw it under the flash for a quick moment. Grab a measuring device. All right. And this guy is about three inches down. So on a t-shirt, um, you know, I might do this image about two and a half, three inches down, depending, just to kind of give it that billboard look, right? Just right in the visual kind of billboard space. Um, and I'll probably do the same with this hoodie just to see if I like that placement here as well. Is there any difference in print life between hoodies and t-shirts? Meaning probably how long will this image last on the hoodie? I, I would say no. Um, I think you're gonna get the same um, life out of that print as long as it's cured, whether it's a t-shirt or a hoodie. Should be, should be very similar. The hoodie shouldn't impact that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, nice handful all the way on. Grab those handles, bring it back to where you want. I'm just gonna leave the seam right on there. Just That way it'll sit just under three inches. It'll probably be about two and three quarters. Bring this white base in. We'll give it a flood. Remember, we're trying to build a foundation here for our first down. Nice, slow passes. Wow, looks great. Throw that over there. Ooh, should you use dye blocker when printing on hoodies? There's nothing stopping you from using a dye blocker. Should you? It kind of depends on what's happening, right? Let's say this image was going on a red 50-50 hoodie. Yeah, I, I might do that. I might actually use a dye blocker to make sure that my white wasn't pink tomorrow from dye migration. Um, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with that term, but essentially a polyfiber is not dyed the same as a natural fiber. When it gets hot, um, it actually will gas off a little bit of the dye that it was dyed with. So roughly the same as a cure temp of ink, around 310 to 320, it starts to gas off some of that dye from the polyfiber. And it'll basically leach into Plastisol ink or any screen print ink. Uh, in this case, tomorrow, if this was a red garment, that white might be pink. So yeah, you can totally use a barrier if you're concerned. It would just mean one more screen. So I like that white, nice and flashed, feeling good. We'll just do one more pass on that. Remember, I already worked hard on the foundation, so when I'm building on top, I can do a little less pressure so it sits on there nice and bright. Zoop. We'll flash it. How long should you flash hoodies? Good question. How long should you flash hoodies? Depends on, hey, do I have a 16 by 16 flash that's just plugging into a 110? Or is this an 18 by 24 240 flash. Both are going to act a little differently. They're going to heat up differently. They're going to be 
Maybe you know, one might be less consistent than the other. Just know, no matter what, hoodies are going to flash quicker than t-shirts. So um, maybe a good way to answer that is, hey, if it normally takes me 10 seconds to flash white on a black tee, it's probably going to only take you six to five seconds on a hoodie. So just know it's going to be quicker. I hope that helps. That feels a little tacky still. I'm just going to send it back under. Thoughts on off-gassing before printing on poly hoodies? It's a good question. Uh, I'm going to give you a vague answer. Sorry, but it kind of depends on the ink you have at hand um, to utilize, right? So if I have a poly ink, like a poly facing ink or a dye blocking ink, I'm probably not going to worry about it. If the inks I have on hand might just be a low bleed ink, not necessarily a poly ink, um, and I'm worried about dye migration, I'm going to test that. I'm going to potentially send a hoodie through and see. I used to never do that. Um, but I, I do know so, some folks that do that and they have success with it. So yeah, I mean, I, I would experiment with it. Super vague, I'm sorry. Okay, so we got white flash white down. We're gonna come to the second color, which is orange. Second and final color, it's only two colors. Give this guy a couple passes. And I like it. I'm seeing a little bit of pitting on that orange. So what I'm going to do is just slow down this stroke, see if I can cover it up a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. And I like that placement as well. Be flexible with your placement. Um, you know, if this is a double X and I like that placement, no, it's going to look different on a small, right? I might want to move it up as I get smaller or larger in my size run. All right. Gonna send that through. Hey, just another quick note that I'm thinking of, uh, some folks might not think about is when you're printing hoodies, you have a hood, right? You have a sweatshirt, it's thicker. The hood's under the shirt. And if I lit it bunch up too much, guess what? It's going to get caught on the inside of this conveyor or kind of best case scenario is it just hits this um, kind of gate at the front. So we want to make sure it's super flat, flat as possible. I have seen sweatshirts get caught in conveyors and it can be super scary. So make sure they're nice and flat. Um, best case is you burn the hoodie. Worst case is it catches on fire, right? What is pitting? Right. That's a good question. So Pitting might be not a great industry term. It's just a term I use. Um, anytime I see kind of an orange peely texture, or let's say in this case, I printed white, and when I print my orange, I could see a little almost like pocking, right? I could see some white specks in my ink. What that means is I just simply didn't get a nice smooth base, right? Um, knowing that, I saw that on my next couple passes of white, I would take my time a little slower, get it nice and smooth and that would totally go away. Um, if it doesn't go away, a couple other things I might consider as variables is just the weave of the fabric. If it's kind of a, you know, junky weave, you might get some impact from that weave. It can create like a pocking or an orange peely look. But most of the time, nine times out of 10, it's just, hey, I went too quick with my base. I need to slow it down, okay? Make sure that that base is real smooth. And then when I go orange on top, guess what? It looks nice and smooth as well. Foundation always is going to impact how that top layer looks. Okay, what's the best placement for a front print on a hoodie? Really just hinges on the image, right? So for instance, uh, let's see if I can grab one of these. Actually, I think I have one over here. Is it okay if I grab this one, guys? Okay, cool. There are other people here, it's not just me. So I'm not talking to myself. Oh, flip, it doesn't have the front. Let's print it. Can I say flip on YouTube? OK, 
Okay, we've got a little web spray. So the question is, hey, what's best placement? Well, that's hard to say because every image is a different size. Sometimes you might like the aesthetic of the placement to be different, right? It might depend on if the image is straight or more vertical looking. It, it's just gonna hinge off of what looks best on that hoodie. In this case, for instance, um, it's not a very big image, right? And I want it to land very visually in kind of what I call the billboard space. Okay. Let's throw this on real quick. We'll kind of redo the front. Plus, I want to see if that pitting or kind of like that texture, I want, I want that to go away. So let's see if I can achieve that. Right? So I go all the way on, grab those handles put it down where I want it. Um, reminds me of a question I had the other day about, like, hey, how do you always hit the same place um, with this seam? Because it's not like a t-shirt, right, where I can see where the color lands on the palette. Like I might draw lines on my palette for a t-shirt. You kind of can't see that here, right? And so I'm just going to have to visually watch where this, seams land, this seam lands on the palette. If I want it to be two and a half inches, I'm gonna have to be a half inch on. The alternative to that is maybe using a laser, right? A laser, for those of you who have not seen it, would attach to the center of the press, has an arm that comes up and would literally just shoot a laser, not like Star Wars, but like just like a laser, it won't harm anything. Comes down on the palette, makes a mark, and you would just load to that laser every time, okay? So let's find our base. And again, since I had like a little bit of texture in that orange, let's see if I can kill that by, get it, kill, because this is a creepy design, right? Let's see if we can kill that. So I'm gonna give it a flood. And knowing I had that kind of pitting or orange peel look, I'm just gonna slow that base down. Let's slow it down a little bit. I'm even gonna do one more. Nobody's gonna judge you if you need to do this two or three times. I mean, I might judge you later, but not to your face. Okay, we're gonna swing that over. Give it a flash. Clean the platen for a fresh surface. That's a good question. So, and I read it out loud to myself, like kind of in my breath, so I should probably read it like out loud. It says, for pitting, would you just clean the platen for a fresh surface? If your platen was that dirty that it was influencing the print, for sure, you would want to change your palette paper or clean off, you know, some of you who are using like liquid adhesive, would just clean it with water and a scrub brush. So, hope that helps. Um, in this instance, it for sure was not the, the filth on the platen, it was just, my technique so all right let's do a second pass here again just nice and slow I want to get this super smooth see if we can kill some of that texture throw it under the flash for a moment is there a big difference in manual versus automatic when you're printing with hoodies it's a good question um, I guess this is kind of what I'm imagining because I've printed auto most of my life. With an auto, it's much more mechanical, right? So some of the finesse that you might have in a manual realm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm like taking this sweatshirt under the flash, I'm making sure that it's, it's just gelled enough, I can put my next layer on. You just have some more of that artistic finesse and feel when you're on a manual. When in auto, it's much more mechanical. We're doing much larger size runs, probably, maybe not, but most likely you're gonna dial that thing in, it's gonna hit the same every time. So the difference is, it's just, you're taking what you learned manually, presumably, and you're just translating it to an auto, right? Um, not a ton of difference other than some of the feel of it is gonna go away. You're gonna have to know, hey, I need to flash for six seconds or five seconds or whatever the case is. Um, 
and auto actually makes it more consistent, hands down. So you're going to get better pressure. Some of the pitting and stuff I was just up against would not be a thing because an auto is going to have more pressure. So hopefully that helps. Overall, the answer is no, but in a way, yes. That was the worst vague answer ever. Sorry. Okay. Nice and slow. I like that. Yeah, most of that texture went away. Um, one thing I could do is if I was really fighting texture, I have a um, kind of a harder squeegee here. I might go to a softer squeegee and uh, put a little more ink down, right? And it would cover up maybe some of those pits. Okay, cool. So I think the reason I was printing this is somebody had a question about placement, right? Um, let me flash this. I'll take it off and kind of put it on my myself. I won't actually put it on. I'll just hold it up. But one second. Okay. So imagine, you know, that that's sitting basically in that kind of billboard space, right? So if this is something I want everybody to see. I want to put it down on my belly. I want to put it just right here. Good visual space. Hope that helps. Back, again, uh, for those of you who weren't in this at the beginning, the back placement is a little different. It'll depend on all the same variables, how big the image is, what direction is it heading, all those things. But on a hoodie, I have this hoodie hanging down, right? And really the best way is to probably put it on a body But, you know, I like to see I like to see the hoodie basically touching the top of the image, right? Uh, and the reason I say that is because I don't want it to hang down so low that it looks kind of tramp stampy, right? Like we want to keep it up a little higher. I'm going to get fired later for saying tramp stamp, I think. So, you know, this image normally on a t-shirt I might do three and a half inches down from a seam. On this, I'll probably do five and a half, five to six inches, right? And and that'll clear the hood, but not make it look too low. Hope that helps. All right. I certainly should have flashed that longer because I got orange all over the rest of the shirt. So, all right. Let's see what other questions we got. Yeah, squeegee durometer. Or the, the question is, does squeegee durometer flexibility matter? Sure. Yeah. Um, so imagine, I mean, there's a lot of variables there. I mean, a good 70 durometer squeegee is a, you know, a very useful tool. It has a good sharp edge. It's very middle of the road. It's going to do 90% of what you do. But imagine the ink's super thick. Let's say you're printing with a poly ink or something thick, or it's a cold day in the shop. And so the ink you're pulling out of the bucket is cold. You may want to use a harder squeegee to shear through that thick ink. Um, softer squeegees are, are likewise with thinner inks. I might be able to deposit more ink on the garment by using a softer squeegee when, like, let's say it's black or navy or something that typically might be a thinner consistency. Hope that helps. Yes, for sure. Definitely experiment with different squeegee blades, uh, squeegee durometers, rather. The one thing I will say is if you're new to screen printing, I would say most folks, I'm going to say just stick with a 70 durometer, learn your chops, and then don't add a new variable until you're ready. Because uh, a squeegee durometer is a new variable, right? Uh, when printing different sizes of shirts, do you change the size of the design? No, not typically. Um, and I hope that my answer doesn't sound jaded, but I don't want to set up a bunch of different designs. <laughs> you know, like if I have a hundred shirts and there's four different sizes in that shirt run, I don't want to set up a bunch of different designs. It's going to take away from what I could possibly make on that, that print run. Um, so my, I guess, kind of thought pattern is that I'm going to make it look aesthetically pleasing on all of those sizes. If I have small to double, I'm going to look, I'm going to make it look 
perfect on medium and large. Extra large, it might look eh, just, just a hair off. You're going to find that it probably looks just fine. And let's say on double, it may look a little small. And then a little big on, I'm sorry. Yeah, on double, it would look a little small. On a small, it might look a little big, right? Um, unless the customer is like, ooh, I want this to be size specific through, you know, small through large, I want it this size, extra large through 3x, I want it to be this size, that's fine. Just charge accordingly if that's the case. But uh, preferably, no, I would not do that. Sounds like a lot of work. Should you get an auto press right off the bat or start with a manual press? What are you trying to accomplish? That's uh, difficult to answer without shaking your hand and saying hello. I, I don't know. Um, my gut, nine times out of 10, is going to tell you to get a manual first so you can learn your chops. Because essentially, screen printing is going to translate from a manual to an auto. All those things you learn getting your hands dirty here, all your short, short you know, wrists and elbows and everything you learn here, translates to an auto. Um, an auto is an amazing efficiency tool. It definitely ups the quality almost, almost every time. Um, it's a good move, but it's not free. You know, I mean, like screen printing is not free, but the, the price between a manual and an auto typically is, is, a, is a large gap. So, I mean, if we're just talking brass tacks, uh, I would start manually most of the time unless I knew I knew I was going to be printing tens of thousands of shirts per month. You know, obviously I would need to probably look at an auto. So I hope that helps. Ooh, this question's rough, guys. Sorry. What do you do if the hoodie shrinks after flashing and registration gets out of whack? Cry? I don't know. No. Uh, you would. Yeah, that that's hard. So you really only have a couple options. Um, <laughs> one is, yeah, move on. I mean, move on, go to your next sweatshirt and learn, learn from the mistake. Um, it, it got too hot, it shrank. And then when you went to put the next layer on, it didn't register, right? So, and I'm sure all of us have seen it. I have a white base, I'm putting something on top. All of a sudden I can see inconsistency and in white base sticking out from the red, right? It's almost impossible to fix it. I mean, if you really have a bunch of time and you want to register and hit it a couple times, great. Kind of not advisable. It probably costs less just to get a new hoodie. Um, one thing you can do, even though I know Ryan has definitely said not to do this, I've told people not to do this, um, I would potentially do a little push-pull action and see if I could cover up that white. So, hope that helps. How do you print? giant designs that go over the pocket? Oh, gee, that's a good question. Um, so, I mean, there's a handful of variables. Obviously, we need a screen that'll facilitate, a palette that'll facilitate that large of a um, design. And then from there, guess what? We're going over the pocket, right? Um, <laughs> sorry, I just got a funny comment on the thing. So, um, we have a palette large enough, we have screens large enough, so my next step is like, hey, how do I get over the seams of this pocket, right? Well, is it a multicolor design? Can you even print it over the pocket? Um, know that because of the pocket on this shirt is essentially like a double layer for those of you guys who printed like, let's say, double layer shorts or a jersey, right? If I, even if this is stuck down, this is a double layer. So if I go base and then it picks up, that presents a big hurdle. I've done this and, you know, it's not advisable. I've even put a little mist spray or something inside to keep this stuck down, but it's still going to be really difficult. One, one way you can do it, especially if it's just one, two colors, maybe let's say the loose, it's loose registration, the image kind of lends itself to being not super registered, right? I will potentially pad the palette. Uh, back in the day, I was known to even cut out old sweatshirts, old reject, reject sweatshirts, and slap a couple on the palette. Spray over the top of those, and then put my hoodie on top of it. 
and that lit the seams compress through those soft layers. Nowadays, I'd probably put neoprene. You can easily access neoprene, cut it out to the pallet, size of the pallet, you know, adhere it down, and then print on top of that. It'll allow the seams to compress. You can do that with zippers as well. So if the, if the uh, neoprene on the pallet is thick enough, it gets to compress in, and it's gonna get rid of kind of this peak and valley situation, right? If I print this right now with like, let's say white, it might look really great till I get close to the hoodie, or to, to the pocket rather. And I'm gonna see where the valley here gets filled with an excess of ink. It's gonna look nasty. So, looks great, doesn't look good, and then it looks okay here. That neoprene or padding the palette somehow is gonna even some of that out. I hope that helps. So, hmm. Okay. Uh, hopefully, some of that helped. Um, I, I want to let everybody know that we designed this print using a couple font packs from our website. Check them out on screenprinted.com. Um, there's also links in the video description and on screenprinted.com, which is a website. I don't know if you know. Um, and that's all for today, guys. If, let me know if there's any questions. We're always here for you. Thank you for tuning in today and asking great questions. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.